Hey there, you're watching and or listening to North of Weatherfield, the Canadian Coronation Street podcast. And this week we are talking about episodes that aired in Canada from July 15th to July 19th. So, so if you haven't watched them yet and uh -huh, you want to, uh -huh. avert your eyes. And, and or ears. And or ears, because we're going to talk about everything that happened. Everything. <laughs> My name is Brittle Star. My name's Shannon. Of course, those aren't our real names. Our real names this week are... Are you doing yours now? Yeah. Okay. I'm not very pleased with it, but this okay, is go what we've got. Right. So I'm going to... Right. Descriptive Did, video. She's uh, holding a notepad with a pen. Right. So a bacon bomb and um, two cakes and hang on, I've just got to go mop the floor. And um, yes, and then I'm going to take Nina. care of every... Good. Yeah. That was good. That was good. Yeah. I, I feel I should have had like a little pinny apron or something. I don't something. have a good line to say, but here's mine. Here's mine. Well, it's nothing really. I mean, it doesn't matter, does it? It's fine. Everything will be fine. Don't worry about it. It's a bit much though, isn't it? I don't know. I was being taunt. Wasn't my best. Oh, eh. He just kind of blows through everything. Everything's kind of like, well, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal until it's suddenly a big deal. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so this week we are going to be talking about uh, Gemma and her family. Yeah. About Gemma, Paul, Bernie, and Kit. Mm -hmm. uh, Dee Dee and Joel. Yeah. Steve, Glenda and George. A little bit about Roy and, of course, Toya. Toya. Um, so we'll start with uh, Gemma and family. So uh, Chesney's having the posh friends over. Yeah. And uh, he'd promised Joseph he was going to make his Ches burgers, but <laughs> they had no money. So yeah. he came back with kebabs, chips, and pop from the kebab shop because he works there. And, and Joseph is yeah. horrified. But? But all his friends come in and they're like, like aces. Fabulous. We're yeah. not allowed to eat this stuff exactly. normally. Exactly, which is awesome. So Joseph was all happy. Um, his friends were all happy. That yeah. was great. Um, and... Then later, Ches is telling Bernie that actually he's got a pair of shoes for Karis because Dev is going has a pair of Ash's old shoes. Right, they can have. So it's like, oh, things are looking up. Things for are the, turning around for the Brown family. Yeah, yes. Um, but when he says this, Bernie assumes that Chesney knows about the whole incident with the shoes, and that's why he's talking about Gemma it. Gemma stealing the shoes. Gemma stealing the shoes. So Bernie sort of lets on about that and then Chesney figures out what's happened. Yeah. Um Gemma comes home, Chesney's raging. He explained she explains that uh, she tried to return them, mm -hmm. but she wasn't able to. She had to run and that she's not going to do that again. Yeah. Cuz Gemma used to be a bit of a bad egg. Yes. Remember I remember back in the day she was like part of that gang, that drug gang. Oh, was remember she? Remember she like there was someone trapped in a garage and Gemma was the girl was part of the gang. Oh, to do with uh, Max and his drug running? Mm, even before that. Right. Yeah. Because I remember there was like, there was some bad guys and there was some, she was part of the bad gang, but then she ended up feeling sympathetic to whoever was locked up. I can't remember who was locked up in the car. <laughs> oh, a lot happens in the street. <laughs> a lot happens. Um, and so she says, I'm not going back to my old ways. Yeah. This is, this is done. Um, so it's time for all the boys to leave. And there's a knock at the door because um, the parents are coming to pick them up. And Gemma goes to answer the door. And it is the manager of the shoe shop who saw her when she was trying to return the shoes right. and threw them in. And she's thinking, how horrible. What a terrible timing. Well, at first she thinks he's just found her. Yeah. He's she doesn't just, realize like, he's one me? of the dads. Yeah. Um, and then the man uh, totally calls Gemma out in front of- All the kids. All the kids. Joseph, his son, all the other kids, everybody. What a jerk move. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and then, so just to add to it, the next day, Joseph's leaving for school. He's all down because none of his friends are talking to him right. anymore. Yeah. He heads off to school and then there's a knock at the door and uh, Gemma is being arrested mm. because now the manager has figured out where she lives and yes. who she is. Yeah. Um, and she's waiting for the duty solicitor. Kit sees her and goes over and talks to her and she tells him everything. Mm -hmm. So that's the sort of Gemma and family part of it. Yeah. Um, yes, I agree. The dad, like- It's a jerk move. He's allowed to 
be upset. He's allowed to even have her arrested the next day. Sure. But- But to call out in front of, like, the kids weren't involved. No, no. And it's evident, I think, you go into Gemma and Chesney's house, you'd be like, these people are scraping by. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so Bernie contacts Kit to ask him if he can somehow get the charges dropped yeah. against Gemma. Um, and he says, I don't know if I can, but if I do, do you promise you'll leave me alone? You right, won't. Right. Like we're done. And she agrees. Mm-hmm. Um, so Kit goes to see the shop owner and Craig comes in to make, cause, cause Kit's not supposed to be there. He's mm-hmm. not supposed to be interfering. Craig comes in to do the regular follow-up about the shoes. Um, and Kit sends him to go do busy work uh, in another shop. Which I feel is what every investigation should, the process should be. Let's get rid of Craig as fast as possible. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, so he talks to the owner. The owner is determined not to drop the charges. Yeah, He's angry um, until Kit mentions that he's done a bit of background research on this guy. And yeah. he's done a few things that are- Shady things. Shady things. Well, I want to know what the shady things were. I know. Right? Yeah. I mean, I take it something he couldn't be arrested for. Yeah. So but the idea sketchy. is you can, yeah, let Little it out sketch. there. Um, so the guy goes, okay, he decides he's going to drop the charges. Um, Craig comes back in. Kit says, nope, we're all done. He's dropping the charges. Chesney's, uh, Chesney, Craig's a bit put out when yeah. they go back to the station because yeah. uh, Kit's the new guy. CID guy come in all swaggery Mr. Cool. and he's interfered. somehow taller than Craig. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, and he's interfered in his case. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um, and uh, so then he points out Gemma to Kit. Yeah. I don't know why in the station because Gemma's heard the charges are dropped. So she's allowed yeah. to go. And he says, oh, Gemma lives on the street and uh, she and Chesney you know, they work, they both work. Yeah. Um, they've got all these kids. They try really hard. They're barely scraping by. Yeah. It's not like Gemma's sitting at home all day. Yeah. Or, and yeah. Chesney doing nothing. Eating they're bonbons. Yes. They're really working. Um, so he goes back to Coronation Street, finds Gemma sitting on Maxine's bench, which is getting a good, uh, good use it these is. days. Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, talks to her and she sort of figures out that Maybe he got the charges dropped. Right. Um, and he kind of confirms that. And so she invites him in if he mm. wants a cup of tea and opens the door. You can hear all the kids, the chaos. And he goes, yeah, okay, goes in. And then flash forward and we see him with the kids. He's, he's having a great time. Yeah. Bonding with the, the, Bonding. the quad squad. Yeah. Um, and then he gets a phone call. Yeah. And it's his dad and his mom has just had a stroke yes. and died. So- he goes to head out just as Bernie's coming in. He was a bit slow on the head out though in that scene, I thought. He's probably in a bit of shock. Well, I know, but he's also like kind of like, well, okay, I guess this happened and we got to deal with our stuff too. It's like, no, you just drop everything. You'd be like, I got to go. Yeah. Nah. yeah. Um, I don't trust him yet. No. Kit. No. No. Um. So Gemma then tells Bernie, no, he's gone because his mom just died. Bernie follows him out to the car and she says, you know, do you want to talk about anything? Mm-hmm. And he says, you, you're not, you can't just come back in like that. Yeah. We agreed. You're not talking to me anymore. And then he sort of pauses and he says, actually, I've decided I'd like to meet my brother and sister and have them get to know me. Yeah. Um, so he wants to bring the secret out into yeah. the open to yeah. um, Paul and Gemma. So Bernie says, great, we'll do that tomorrow. Bernie is waiting in the pub because she and Kit are going to meet there yeah. before they go up to the flat. Um, she's nervous, mm-hmm. but she's really happy. Mm-hmm. And then she's waiting, waiting. He doesn't show up. Meantime, Kit goes straight up to the flat on his own. Yeah. And Paul and Gemma are waiting for Bernie and her mm-hmm. news. Mm-hmm. And he tells them that he is their younger brother. Yeah. Um, and... They're quite horrified, especially, I think, because he's the younger brother. That whole thing of if he were the older brother, yeah, it maybe made more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then he, Kit points out everything that Bernie, like the fact that Bernie just abandoned him as he views it. Yeah. And um, and then about Bernie asking to meet him on his 21st birthday. Yeah. And then getting drunk and blowing him off. Yeah. So he's 
spinning Bernie in a negative light sure. right off the bat when not he tells that, the story. Not that hard. Not that hard. Um, but n- no sympathy, no empathy. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're angry. Like they're getting upset, Paul and Gemma, at Bernie. Sure. And he steps out to, I think, make a call or take a call or something. You yeah. see him in the background and they're, Gemma and Paul are talking to each other quite upset. And you see him smile. He's quite pleased he's caused this strife. Exactly. That's why I don't trust him. Yeah. Um, he's just like his mother. I don't trust them. So here's my question. Was, has Kit been looking to hurt Bernie right from the start? No, I think that, I mean, well, no, I mean, yes, in a sense, because he wants to get vengeance. Because I think, that you, I think we can't, we haven't realized how much damage and how hurt he was when he was 21. Yeah. And his birth mother said, let's meet. And then just didn't bother showing up. Yeah. And as he said to Bernie, when he saw her later, that's why he left her waiting in the pub. It's really not nice, is it? Yeah. Um, But did he, he seemed to be having a good time with Gemma and the kids. I think he's been legit He seemed to be a bit softened. Yeah. Like actually happy. Yeah. Did his mother dying and him realizing that Bernie is the, only well, mother figure he yeah. has left, and that See, made him go sour again. Well, what's happening is that uh, uh, he his mother's died. Mm-hmm. He's got Bernie as a backup mom, mm-hmm. and then Bernie has Paul, who's expiring soon, mm-hmm. and she's got Kit as a backup son. Right, it's a little crisscross. Right, applesauce. Not healthy for anyone. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Exactly. Terrible. But yeah, I think we, we, I mean, he's obviously been severely hurt and damaged by when he was 21 Mm -hmm. and that's playing into his character now. I think he, I think he genuinely likes the quads. He genuinely likes Gemma and Paul. Right. But he's like, let's band together. Uh, Side note, I did really like when Beth was uh, flirting with Kit and then Gemma came up to see if they were still on for a pint and- she realized their family. Yeah. And she was shocked by that. But then when she found out that Bernie was the shared relative, Mother, yeah. um, she was quite flabbergasted. That was quite funny. Beth is doing my head in. <laughs> um, all right, Dee Dee and Joel. Yeah. So Sabrina is talking with her blonde friend, telling her about the second encounter she had with Joel. Where Do you know he, that girl's name yet? I don't know. The, we heard it once. Mm, okay. And I don't remember That's it. not enough. It's got to be at least 20 times for us to remember it. <laughs> yeah, I have to write it down. Yeah. Um, and talks about him giving her alcohol. And the friend says, like, that's really weird. And she says, no, no, he's legit. He's a lawyer. Shows the card. Yeah. Um, and the friend says, well, then that's definitely not a good look if you're a lawyer. Yeah, to totally. Be, giving a young girl alcohol in the afternoon. A minor with alcohol. Yeah. Um, So she says, give me the card. I'll get rid of it for you. And she pockets it. Yeah. Uh, She then confronts Joel in the street with this card Mm -hmm. and basically demands money from him. Yeah. To keep quiet. He brushes her off. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we see Dee Dee. So Dee Dee's meeting with Joel's parents ended badly last week when uh, Amy spilled the beans that they were engaged. Yeah. And so they left in a huff, but then Joel's parents show up at the flat Mm -hmm. and um, apologize to her saying that they've, they've overreacted. um, But they felt really shut out of Joel's life the past year. He's been quite secretive. Yeah. Ever since he started killing people. (laughs) Ever since he started killing people. Yeah. Um, So it's been really hard and it was really nice for them to see how Ed and Michael were standing up for Dee Dee Mm -hmm. in the bistro. Yeah. Yeah. and so that's all good. They accept the invitation to the surprise engagement party the next day. Yeah. What a weird thing. It was, that was super weird, but yeah. Dee Dee's weird. She is weird. Yeah. Yes. Um, great clothes though. She's got amazing clothes. If she could have herself a really nice flat yeah. if she spent less on clothes. I, I agree. <laughs> um, so Joel is pleased to see his parents at the luncheon the next day. Uh, everyone's getting along well. The blonde girl comes in. Joel sees her, yeah. can tell she's going to make trouble. So he goes over. Um, Dee Dee is giving them the stink eye. She wasn't given the stink eye, I don't think. I think because I remember she looked over and she was just like, what's, why? Mm-hmm. Why is she talking? I think jealousy is going to be a big issue with Dee Dee. Um, but I think anyways. She, I think the penny's not dropped, but I think that she's starting to go, hmm, this is weird. 
Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Just she subconsciously, seems, way, yeah. way, way down. Nah. Yeah. Um, so he, Joel tells the girl, go wait outside. I'll yeah. be out in a minute. Yeah. Dee Dee comes over and says, oh, was that the client that you were talking about taking up yeah. all your time? And he's like, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's that's who it was. That's the ticket. Um, so he goes out to talk to her. Meantime, Dee Dee, his parents, everyone is talking about how great Joel is that he takes on these pro bono legal mm-hmm. aid cases yeah. to help that poor girl. Yeah. Um, meantime, he's out and she's demanding money to not spill that he was plying underage girls with alcohol in the yeah. afternoon. Yeah. Um, he gives her some money um, and then says, that's all I have for now. I know. Why a, would he add for now? I know, as opposed to, there you go. There you go. See you later. Yeah. Um, and then later we see her sitting on the bench mm-hmm. and D.S. Swain comes up behind. Oh, that's right. I'd forgotten about this. And this is when we hear her name yeah. because she says her name. And you think at first, oh, is this part of someone she spoke to with the investigation yeah. um, for Lauren? Bah, bah, bah. Her daughter. This is the troubled teenage daughter. Yeah, which I thought was brilliant. I'd quite enjoyed that yeah, twist. Like, yes. Yep. Um, so... Uh, Joel and Dee Dee go back to the flat. So Joel has, Dee Dee has decided that they should move in together before Ugh, the wedding. Yeah. But they still have to maintain separate bedrooms. Ugh. So, but it was a bit of a weird thing because Joel's place has two bedrooms. So she sometimes can stay there. I know. But then instead they decide to ask Adam, she asks Adam to move out. They're trouble. He was very gracious Joel about it. Joel and Dee are trouble. Sure, different degrees of trouble. <laughs> so she asks him to move in with her. Yeah. Um, and he's quite pleased. She goes off to buy a bottle of wine to celebrate. And uh, he gets yet more texts from this yeah. girl asking for money. So here's my question. Um, is this girl just looking to make money from blackmail? Or is this going to become more of a like intimate transactional relationship? Like rom- like romantic? Like with, well, like with Lauren. Like paying for, like a well, quasi-boyfriend. I, yeah, because I think that that's probably his, uh, one of his skills is that he's able to turn the charm on and make these young girls feel special. And, and he has money. And he has money and, yeah. 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 But I mean, you'd think that D.S. Swain's kid would have money as well. Because she's the daughter of a police officer? Yeah, sure. Who's... A single parent? Which D.S. Swain dress is nice. She's just wearing the same blazer every day. She can get away with it. Mm. Navy blue. There you go. You're a police officer. It's dark. It's black, I think. Oh, maybe she's got two. Yeah. Um, No, I feel it's not. I don't think she's in it for the money. I think that she's going to be. I think that Joel's going to use her skills to make her feel like she's super special. And she's different from all the other girls. And and bring her. And I think it's going to culminate in a dramatic takedown. Is Craig going to be involved? God, I hope not. <laughs> He'll inadvertently be involved. He'll walk through like, what's going on? <laughs> Stand on the evidence. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so Steve. So uh, it was Steve's birthday. Our Steve. This week. Poor Steve. Our Steve. So uh, Tim has to tell Steve he's not going to be able to go to the three pints in a game of darts birthday <laughs> that Steve has organized, which by the way, not that I want. Not that I'm a darts person, but I love the but idea like, of yeah. this is this is what I want this to is do. What the evening will entail. No, I think it's afternoon. This it's even better. Yeah, this is what the afternoon will entail. Yeah, three pints, game of darts, game of darts. Yeah, maybe boom, a little hot pot. You're home. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Tim makes up a blatantly obvious story about what he has on. He has a doctor and a dentist appointment yeah. on the same day. Yeah. Um, so Steve's a bit sort of I don't know what's going on here because I don't think that's true, but I'm not sure what's happening. Then Sally comes in and asks him to give her a run into town so that she can buy um, an outfit for tomorrow or the next day or whatever yeah. it is. So now Steve's decided that combined with uh, Amy not having any plans for him means it must be a surprise birthday party. Mm. Um, and so he goes into town to buy himself a new shirt mm-hmm. as well to look all fancy for this. Uh, he gets home. Amy's in a bad mood. Uh, because Tracy has decided that she's not coming back yeah. for the unveiling of Tommy O's bust. Yeah. Because she doesn't want to leave the good weather yeah. behind. And so this means that not only has the spa day Amy planned for them been kiboshed. Out the window. Yeah. Um, 
Tracy now wants Amy to step in and take over the florist mm -hmm. with all the sort of financial aspects, mm -hmm. as well as going to school. Yeah. And as well as working at the bistro. And as well as navigating life as a young woman. Exactly. In 2024. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so Steve's birthday mor morning, he's all excited mm -hmm. because he thinks he's got a party that day. Yeah. Plus it's his birthday morning. Yeah. Um, gets a lovely gift from Amy um, and asks, you know, what, what are the plans today? And Amy's like, oh, you said you didn't want to do anything. I'm working. Yeah. And he's like, oh, in the bistro. Okay. So maybe that. And Ken said, maybe we could go get a bit of lunch. And yeah. Steve's like, oh yeah, lunch. That's a good idea. Yeah. Like he's, he's trying to play. Coy. Yes, yeah. that he doesn't know there's a surprise party yeah, yeah. in the bistro, yeah. but there is no surprise party in the bistro. Um, so Cassie arrives to uh, be Ken's carer, and Steve heads up for his birthday bath, mm -hmm. which apparently is a bath with a beer. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cassie, Amy, and Ken all now realize that Steve thinks he's getting a surprise party. Yeah. So there's a bit of panic. Amy is out because she's already sure. working. Yeah. Um, Cassie says she can get the drinks and snacks together. Mm -hmm. Ken's in charge of the invite list. Yeah. Cue Steve coming down from his bath. Yeah. All excited and happy. And it's uh, Ken, Cassie, Brian, and Rita. <laughs> <laughs> because that's all he could round up because everyone yeah. else was working. Yeah. And Tim had an event. Yeah. Yeah. And so poor Steve is crushed. Yeah. And then just to add insult to injury, then sees on social media Sally posting her and Tim at the unveiling of Tommy O's statue yeah. bust. Um, so now Steve's raging because he feels quite betrayed. Yeah. Because Tim is going to an event celebrating the man who stole Steve's wife. Yeah. And not coming to Steve's 50th birthday. Yeah. Brutal. Yes. So uh, he says, right, that's it. I'm going down there. And Cassie says, you've been drinking. Yeah. I'll drive you. Mm -hmm. So rather than trying to calm him down and the fact that he can't drive is a good reason yeah. to not go there. Yeah. She just decides, but right? Cassie likes a caper. She likes a caper. Yeah. Um, they get there, they find the room where the, the bust has the cloth over it yeah. ready to be unveiled. Um, and they're trying to plot what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Next thing we know, we see uh, everyone entering the room, getting ready for the big unveiling, whip it off, and it's a soccer ball with a face drawn on it. <laughs> Which is pretty great. Which is pretty good. It was very Wilson from Castaway. Yes, it I was. Liked, I liked it. It was. Yeah. Um, and then we see Cassie and Steve legging it out the back door and mm -hmm. hopping in the car mm -hmm. with the bus. The bus, yeah. Yeah. Um, Cassie says, what are we doing now? And he's like, I have a plan. Let's mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. Tim and Sally arrive back early from the non-event yeah. because it was a bit of a yeah. bust. Yeah, yeah. See? Yeah, See that? that was pretty a bit good. of a bust. Yeah. Um, and they decide they're going to go upstairs, have a little bit of hanky-panky with their spare time. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Tim pulls back the covers <gasps> and the bust of Tommy O is yes. in the bed, yeah. a la Horse's Head. A la Godfather, Godfather stuff. Yes. Yeah. He knows exactly who put it there. Mm, he yeah, of course he does. Goes over, storms over to Steve, Steve's house, and Steve tells him how upset he was mm. um, by Tim blowing off his birthday to celebrate the man who stole his wife. Um, and Steve says he feels like a failure. His son died. His brother, his daughter, went through a year of hell. Yeah. His other daughter has chosen to live on the other side of the world. Yeah. Um, his. 40th, he went through a bit of depression. So for his 50th, he really wanted everything to be positive. To be positive. And then the two of them had a lovely heart to heart. Which was nice. As they were wont to do. Yeah, yeah yes. exactly. Um, Love a good stim. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cassie later sees the bust, tells, because it's still in the house, mm -hmm. and tells Steve he has to get rid of it. Sure. Um, because if he's caught with it. It's just plain old theft. It's plain old theft. Plus, does he want to go to jail with a load of Weathy County fans? Yeah. Not a good, not a good idea. No. Um, so she's trying to get him to destroy it, hands him a hammer. She's like, this will be good. You can bash in Tommy O's face. Yeah. Steve can't bring himself to destroy or dump in the canal his heroes. His hero. Yes. Yeah. Poor Steve. Um, so he and Tim put on some high-vis vests, mm -hmm. dress as delivery drivers. 
um, and bring it back to the hotel. Mm -hmm. And they try to drop it. An employee sees them. Yeah. They have to sort of confess because there's no no name, no address, yeah. nothing on the box. Um, Debbie sees them and says, what are you guys doing here? Why are you dressed like that? And very clever. They say, oh, it's a new sideline for streetcars doing which delivery. Which was a good which was thinking. Which yeah. was a great idea. Um, but then Steve goes out of his way to point out that there's no name or address anywhere on this box. <sighs> Picks up the box and- the head falls out the bottom. Falls out the bottom. It would have been if they just put some kind of label on it. It would have been a great plan because yeah. they could say they were asked to deliver it. And they it was just somebody anonymously dropped yep. it off, and yep. they don't know who it was. And here they are bringing it back to the yeah. hotel. Oh. Um, We'd be good at capers. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's that's Steve's birthday. Yeah. So rough for Steve. Uh, Glenda and George. Yeah. Just sort of briefly, so George and Michael are out for a drink, and George is trying to convince Michael to have a good have a word, put in a yeah. good word with him with Glenda. Um, but meantime, while George is out, she's stolen his house keys. Yeah. Um, to their parents' house, and then when he comes home to Eileen's house, there is a load of his stuff right. sitting in the in the living room, including a portrait of his dad Archie, <laughs> and a cremy, which would be the award from the, the funeral crem and yeah. crematorium industry. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, which is quite a nice award, actually. Uh, it was a very nice award. Yeah. It was large. It was large, but yeah. it's sort of modern art. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so they're, over the next day or two, they're alternately fighting, talking about it, discussing it. Glenda says she thinks she should have the house. Yeah. George has the business. I think that's fair. Um, and George said the house is worth more than the business. And she said, well, you're not running the business very well then. Yeah, exactly. Tough luck, George. Yeah. Um, and Glenda says to him, dad always gave me the mucky end of the stick. Yeah. I just feel like I'm being ignored. Yeah. And I think that did it for George. Yeah. And they're watching, you can see both of them watching like the family dynamics around sure. them and they're like, okay. So uh, George has a change of heart. Yeah. Um, says you can have the house. Yeah. I just want us to get along. I don't yeah, want us to sure. fight. Meantime, though, Michael has dumped Glenda because the caper of stealing the keys, changing the locks, and kicking George out of the house yeah. has turned him off. He says, I can't, I don't want this drama. Which was shocking because the magnetic attraction between <laughs> the two of them was palpable. <laughs> it was just incredible. Exactly. How could they possibly not be together? Exactly. Um, yeah. So as of now, they're broken up. Glenda's quite sad about that. And yeah. I think Michael's quite sad about it. Yeah. Yeah. Again, zero chemistry between them, but they're both nice people. I and want I feel to be like, happy. I feel like we have zero invested in that relationship whatsoever. They, yeah. bro they, they broke up and it was like, eh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Um, and then even more briefly, Roy made a little pop-up appearance. Yeah. Um, Nina's left on her own in the calf all day. Mm -hmm. Everybody else who works there has bailed for yeah. various reasons. Um, and so she goes upstairs to tell Roy, listen, you have to come down and help me because- I haven't even had my break yet. I'm yeah. overwhelmed. Yeah. It's all too much to do on my own. And Roy refuses. Mm -hmm. Tells her she's just going to have to keep going on her own. Mm -hmm. He's continued growing his facial hair. Mm -hmm. He's coming home. I do like the fact that they haven't just like reverted back to normal with him. He's not, he's not just back in the cafe. He's, yes, he's, he's traumatized. He's traumatized and he's working through it. Is he working through it though? Well, I think he's, he's, he's going to be forced to work through it eventually. He's muddling through it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I take it we're going to start seeing a bit yeah. more of Roy. Uh, and then finally, oh. Toya, Nick, oh. and Leanne. Oh. So Leanne has got Amy watching some Institute videos um, as a way to de-stress. And not only did Amy find it helpful, but she says it's now got her kind of keen on the idea of taking over the florist mm -hmm. because of all these She's ideas. Motivated, yeah. Yes. Um, and... Leanne suggests that she come to one of the in-person events, but she says she can't afford the fees. She then meets Rowan at the bar. Um, and I like that he sort of sold the Institute as he's like, well, Amy, the Institute's not for everyone. Not everyone <laughs> can handle it. That's the classic sales tactic. Yeah. Though. It's like a, I used to do that at the people would complain at the, the Hotel Belvedere. Yeah. They'd be up and I'd be like, maybe you'd be happier at the Holiday Inn. They'd be like, <laughs> oh, no, no, we're fine here. <laughs> we're fancy hotel people. Yeah. Um, so... 
Toyo here, Toya's not happy that Amy's now being roped into this as well. Yeah. So then they're home at the flat in the morning and uh, Leanne's going to be taking um, Sam into school. Toya's not feeling well. Yeah. Um, her stomach's upset. So she's like, I think I'm actually going to stay home. Yeah. Um, and Nick says, well, I've got some work to do here. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'll be here as well. Toya doesn't want to be left alone mm-hmm. with Nick. She's feeling guilty. She's looking for a flat to move out. Right. Uh, she says, I'll go in anyways, Mm -hmm. because I don't want to be in this situation. So she goes in and, uh, while she's at work, this is after Leanne's in, she gets a stabbing pain in her side, sort of drops her to her knees. Um, and Leanne's like, yeah, you have to go home because you're not feeling well. She goes back to the flat, Nick's there says she probably should have some soup. That might help make her feel better. <laughs> so he heads out to go buy some soup. Yeah. Uh, as soon as he leaves, she drops again with another yeah. stabbing pain, um, calls for him. He's already left. Yeah. The old phone is dead, of course. For sure. Um, and he comes back because he's forgotten something. Yeah. And finds her and they go to the hospital. Yes, yeah. And uh, she's in the hospital bed next with her because he came in with her. And Leanne rushes in because mm-hmm. she's been told her sister's in hospital. And the doctor comes in and says, we've got some test results. And Toya says, oh, you can speak, speak freely. freely. Yeah. yeah. And? Prego. Yep. Preggers. Yeah. Pregnante. Yes. So even if I'm being generous with the timelines, they slept together two weeks ago? I know. It Maybe seemed, three? It seemed a little... Early, which makes me think that it's, they think it's next, but it might not be next. I thought of that too. But I don't know who she's been with, but she's a dark horse, Artoya. I mean, she dated Peter for years. Yeah. Without telling anybody. Yeah. She's a dark horse. Yeah. 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 Bit of a goer. Well, I mean, that's evident. She was going with Nick. Maybe Nick's a bit of a goer. Of course Nick's a goer. <laughs> uh, so humorous moments. I'm glad, obviously, they're humor writer- is back from yeah. their six weeks off. Yeah. Um, because there were some great humorous moments. Mm-hmm. Um, everything Rita said at Steve's party. Rita was great. Was a fan. I'm, I'm like a, I'm not really a Rita fan. I don't have anything against Rita, but she is I'm just like, yeah, I'm, whatever. I'm a Rita fan because she is, she is, her and uh, Ken Barlow, William mm-hmm. Roche are royalty. Yeah. They're Coronation Street royalty. Yeah. But I'm, okay, whatever. But that was- she was good. My favorite Rita yeah. scenes ever. Um, gets a bit punchy. Gets a bit punchy. Is being a real old lady. Yeah. Um, I liked when she said to Cassie, do you have anything other than crisps? And Cassie said, oh, is it because of your teeth? And Rita went. <laughs> and chomped her teeth. No wrong with my teeth. <laughs> Which was very funny. Um I also uh, enjoyed Sally reflecting on why she should have a statue of her. Um, mm-hmm. And one of the reasons would be including uh, her campaigning for LGTB, LGTBQ plus rights. Yes, yeah. And uh, Tim said, texting Sophie doesn't make you a campaigner. <laughs> I like that. I also liked in that scene where she said, he's like, where would you put the statue? She's like, I don't know, Maxine's bench? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. Is anyone using that anymore? And it's never been used more. I know, than the past like two months. Um, I also liked Steve face-to-face with Tim and he said, I'm 50 and what have I got? And Tim said, halitosis. That was pretty good. Um, Lovely moments. Yeah. Um, Definitely between Steve and Tim. Stim. Yeah, it's the Stim moments. Uh, Steve said to Tim, I wanted to have a good birthday this year because of what happened on my 40th. Yeah. And Tim says, what happened on your 40th? And Steve said- I got depression, didn't I? Yeah. And uh, and Tim said, well, that's not your fault. That's nothing to be embarrassed about. Yeah, I like that as well. I like the fact that they- It's like saying, oh, I broke my arm on my uh, yeah, 40th. I, and, and blaming myself. I'm such an idiot. I broke my arm. And it's like, yeah. well, it's not your fault Yeah. that you broke your arm. Yeah. It's not your fault that you had depression. Yeah. Yeah, you just said something you had to go through. Yeah. Yeah. That was lovely. Yeah. I think we all grew. <laughs> uh, well, that was pretty good, Shannon. That was very succinct. There was a lot to get through. Considering I was out of town yeah, and uh, had to watch on my laptop 
while lying on my hotel bed in Vancouver, <laughs> which was very difficult to stay awake in some of the yeah, seasons. But yeah. uh, I did pretty good, I think. Yeah, well, luckily it was an exciting week. Exactly. Um, so thanks so much for watching and or listening. You can find us at weatherfield.ca, weatherfield.ca, where you can sign up and you'll get email notifications every time a new episode is posted. You can also, of course, subscribe and follow on your favorite podcasting platform or podcast platform or podcasting platform, either one. You make a podcast, you want to follow us, you can do that too. You're allowed to. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and then I think it's probably time for the theme song. Yep. So it was a good week. I, I'm looking forward to next week because I like the introduction of a few of these storylines. Yeah. And I'm so glad we've got humor coming back. Yeah, because it was getting a bit dark, but I think it will take another turn. It's going to get dark again, though. Yeah, but it can be dark with humor. Dark humor? That's the best kind. It is really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. See you guys next week.